Okay, welcome everybody. I'm going to share my screen and um, as people get on, we might have a little bit of noise, but I am gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. Yay. Okay, well, I'm really excited because this is one of my favorite topics. It's also an uncomfortable topic for some people to talk about, but it's so amazing. Such good information coming out now. In fact, um, what's really exciting about this information, you guys, is that this is new as of 2012. This is literally changing medical textbooks. This is changing how people practice medicine. Um, and it's really, really exciting because there's a lot of information that we know now and how to help people really get on the right track that we didn't know just a few years ago. So um, what I love is, you know, some of the information that was really profound to me is that our gut is actually our second brain and it's possibly can override our first brain more than our brain can override it. So it's really probably the most important brain that we have going on in our bodies. Um, and it's this complex system um, of beneficial bacteria, um, beneficial organisms, um, not so good bacteria and not so good organisms. So it's, it compromises this whole um, network called the microbiota um, or microbiome. And you'll hear them kind of interchangeably. Um, one of the things that when you kind of think about beneficial bacteria, most people just think of a, of a probiotic, but it's a lot more complex than that. And I'm really excited to share with you and more about that. But what one of the things that they see with the microbiota is that it actually makes vitamins for us. So a lot of people um, that are vegan, they have trouble with vitamin B12 um, because that's one of the things that's easy to get through meat. But actually the microbiota synthesizes B12 for us if it's in a good balance. So it's all about good balance. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to be vegan. I'm just saying that was so profound to me. I didn't know that microbiota actually synthesized vitamins for us. Um, it also helps us digest starches. So if it's off, we don't digest starches very well. Um, and then it also sends messages, messages to the brain directly. So there's a gut brain connection. Um, and a lot of the neural, I'll get into this a little bit more too, but a lot of our neurotransmitters are, are created in the gut. So it's a huge um, complex system that is really exciting to know more about. Um, and I will tell you my story really fast because this is why I'm so passionate about this information. Um, actually 12 years ago, when my son was one, he was showing some early signs of autism. But before that, it started really in his gut. He was very colicky baby. Um, I had a lot of sleepless nights and he had eczema, which is also created, you know, um, connected with your gut health. And he was just a really unhappy baby. And I was an unhappy mom. I loved him to bits and I didn't know how to help him. So I flew him to a specialist who really started teaching me about gut health and the, the connection between what we put in our bodies and what we get out of our health in terms of that, that whole gut connection and how it affects the brain. And so she, it's a long story, but she really helped me and taught me a really simple solution to get more nutrition into his gut in an easy way that really affected his brain health. So I'm really um, excited about that, but also the fact that he could digest things um, again and that he wasn't you know, super fussy all the time and his eczema cleared up. So really exciting information and that's why I'm so passionate about this information. Um, so the other thing, okay, the, the other thing that people know, kind of, there's a couple things that people know about the gut health, that probiotics are good and antibiotics are bad, right? Well, what's interesting to me when I was learning this information um, to know is that antibiotics have different effects. Different antibiotics have different effects. Different prescriptions have different effects. So it's just what this whole complex system that we have is affected very differently by diet prescriptions, um, lifestyle, all of these different things. And if you see here, um, can you guys see the pointer? Or is that something that you can't see on the screen? Can someone nod? Yes, you can. Okay. So the early colonization of the gut is actually, it starts with birth. So were you born C-section? Were you born vaginally? It makes a huge difference on your microbiota and how it's, what it looks like. Um, be, um, people that are born vaginally have a healthier microbiota because they get a lot of that beneficial bacteria from their mom versus um, if you're born C-section, the first exposures to bacteria are usually in the hospital, in the doctor's hands, you know, different instruments, things like that. Um, and then the next thing really that shapes is the diet. And we'll get into a little bit more about that. 
But what's really fascinating to me that since that whole, um, the focus in the fifties on like sanitizing everything and everything being, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness came out in the fifties, that statement. Um, and so ever since we've been kind of this, this society focused on sanitation, you know, hand sanitizers, all of these different things. And that's life saving, obviously. And if you're going to go into surgery, you want your doctor washing their hands. But there are other benefits to, you know, coming into contact with dirt and germs and viruses that actually build our immune systems and build our gut microbiome. Um, the next thing that shapes the microbiome is prescription drugs. And I really thought this was fascinating because I, and I had to write this out so I would remember all of this. So antibiotics shape the gut in different ways. Penicillins actually allow bacteria found in the bowel to move up into the intestines. Um, tetracyclines, uh, and that's one of the ones that a lot of people get prescribed if they have acne, um, alter protein structures in the gut wall, causing the immune system to attack the gut. Um, I was on tetracycline for uh, acne as a, as a teenager. Um, myosin, so erythromycin, can completely wipe out the good E. coli in our gut. So there's actually good E. coli, so then it makes us more susceptible to the bad strains. Um, and then steroids, a lot of people don't think about steroids. They really affect our gut health as well. They're just as important to take a probiotic alongside if you are on a, a steroid prescription because it almost always equals a fungal overgrowth. And then con contraceptive pills are devastating to the gut as well. Um, and another thing to really put point out here is that if the mom is if a mom is has a what we call dysbiosis, let's say a bad um, balance between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, it's not that you can't have any bad bacteria in your gut. You really want to shoot for eighty percent good bacteria, twenty percent bad bacteria, because then the eighty percent wins. Um, so if the mom has what we call dysbiosis, where there's more bad bacteria than good, they actually pass that on to their children. Um, and so then you have to do some gut therapy for the child as well. So it's a really, again, a complex um, system to understand, but the good news is there's a lot you can do to shape it. So I'm really excited to share that information with you. Um, okay, and then obviously lifestyle affects our microbiota. It's very susceptible to stress. Um, and then genetics shape our microbiota. It's one of the things um, that a lot of people think that um, genetics are our destiny, um, and that's not true. And we've really found out again, more about genetics in the last few years as well. So I'm excited to share more about that. Um, so what, some of the things that are really interesting is that 70% of our immune system is cells reside in the GI tract. So really our, most of our immune system is in our gut. So if our gut is off, our immune system is off. The development of intestinal immune system is actually largely dependent on the exposure to those, micro, those microorganisms like I was talking about. The gut produces three-fourths of the body's neurotransmitters. And the gut is, has a greater metabolic activity than the liver. So very, very important. Um, and then I just had these little bit, um, visuals over here. One of the, just to remind myself that one of the things that they're finding with the microbiota is that it absolutely has everything to do with how much excess weight that you carry. Um, so with excess, when we see people that have excess weight that's really stubborn, They've, if they do gut therapy, they see the weight fall off. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but that's really exciting. Um, and then this was just a funny, like, you know, he's having to have the hamburger. That's, you know, really the microbiome, the microbiota or the bad bacteria saying, you know, eat that hamburger or I'm going to die. And so we get more messages from um, our gut about what we want, what we put in our body than our brain actually has. So when you're on these diets, um, it's hard for if your gut bacteria is off, uh, it's hard to stay on that diet because the, the gut wins. Um, okay. And then um, the next thing that I like to point out is general signs of there being a problem. So if you have chronic fatigue, food allergies, um, seasonal allergies, joint pain, arthritis, skin rashes um, that relate to inflammation, nutritional deficiencies, improper absorption, weak immune system, um, sorry, I'm chasing this little thing around and, um, more, more, so that's kind of like the general, the start, right. And then the more severe conditions are IBS, um, Crohn's, um, uh, celiac, diabetes, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's. Okay. Sorry. My daughter's sneaking in here. Go out. Okay. Are you going to be really quiet? Okay. So, um, and then the brain, Let's see. Brain-related symptoms include... Oh, you can get those downstairs. Thank you. Um, 
okay, go ask daddy, he's the paramedic. Thank you. <laughs> Always interruptions. Um, okay, brain-related symptoms include mood issues, brain fog, anxiety, depression, again, gut-brain connection, right? So if we have any of those, we know that we can really help those things by balancing the gut. Um, a, few, a few like larger neurological signs and symptoms of intestinal problems are Alzheimer's, autism, fibromyalgia, um, general anxiety, headache, migraine, multiple sclerosis, and neuropathy. And you'll see this in my, in my son's story a little, a little bit. Um, okay. The next thing is, so I like to kind of make these interactive and it's a little bit hard when we're on um, line. So usually I have people guess um, how many uh, packets of sugar are in a small orange soda bottle. Um, and a lot of people guess anywhere between, um, you know, some people say 50, some people say four. Well, it's actually, and I think this is interesting, this was shocking to me actually, it's one of those small ones that would come out of a, you know, like a soda pop machine. It's 22 packets of sugar. And if you think about like, you know, a tall glass of iced tea, you would never stir 22 packets of sugar into it. Same volume, right? Um, but because it's carbonated and artificially flavored and things like that, we don't taste how sweet it is. Um, and I could go into, you know, Sugar, you know, refined sugar versus um, high fructose corn syrup and all those other things. Um, definitely something to know that sugars, refined carbs, hydrogenated oil, processed food chemicals um, all have a devastating effect to our microbiome. Our bodies are just not, you know, built to, to digest um, fake foods, I call them. Um, again, this isn't about being perfect. This is about, you know, kind of knowing how to help the microbiome, how to, you know, have those treats, but also to balance the effects of those treats. Um, I'm all about simple solutions and not perfection. Um, one of the things I really like people to understand in terms of sugar is that it's one of these vicious cycles. Not only does it become a vicious cycle within our, within our gut, um, but it also is very, very addictive and it has, it has um, a lot to do with our brain health as well. I actually do a brain health talk. Um, if anyone's interested in that, you can ask the person that invited you um, to be connected to that. But one of the things that I thought was profound is that, you know, the average consumption back in the turn of the century was about four to five pounds of sugar a year. Today, the average consumption is about 130 pounds and that's, an average. I mean, some people, it's upwards to two, 300 pounds a year. And you can see this bar graph here, you know, it's huge. It's alarming how much sugar we consume as a society today than, you know, just not that very, you know, not long ago. Um, that's 3,500 pounds in an entire lifetime. So that's, that's shocking to me. And that has a huge effect on our brain. It has a huge effect on our gut. And there's this addictive cycle. There's um, actually areas of the brain that it, that sugar, um, enlivens that drugs do and it's the same cycle where you you come down and then you need the the sugar high again and it's this the cycle that a lot of people have a hard time getting out of again simple solutions i'm not about like you can't have a treat a lot of the time we will cook at home and you know make muffins or cupcakes or things like that and we'll sweeten them with honey or coconut sugar or things that are more um less processed Sugar is processed 27 times, and one of those processes is bleaching, and so our bodies just don't recognize it anymore. In fact, they've seen that it totally paralyzes the immune system for six hours. So if you're constantly eating a little bit of sugar, your immune system is not functioning well. Um, and they don't see that with unprocessed sugars. So again, simple solutions um, to, you know, it's not about perfection. Okay, the next thing I like to really point out to people is that, um, you know, processed foods haven't been around that long. And don't, and I usually say, what decade were these foods first introduced? These are some of the first packaged cereals. Um, the, so basically, yeah, I get people to guess, and, and this um, it fools people because, again, it's 80s packaging, but they actually were introduced in the 1950s. So if you think about that, that's not very long ago. And I don't really cite animal studies very often, but I always cite this one because I think it's profound. They fed cats packaged foods, and after the third generation, they could no longer reproduce. And if you think about it, my mom was born in 1948, so her, she was the first generation to have it available her whole life, and really it only caught on the last half of her life anyway. Um, and then my generation is the second generation to have it my whole life, and then my kids are the third. So look at the infertility rates right now. And not only that, but disease rates and things like that as well. So it has a huge, huge effect on our bodies and our microbiome. 
Um, and you know, the striking reality is that 90% of the food eaten in America is processed, you guys. And so I, call, I tease that I'm a mom on a mission about making simple solutions. There's a lot of great companies out there that don't put a lot of these food chemicals that, that alter so many things in our bodies. So it is about simple switches, like you know, one macaroni and cheese for the other. One, is, one isn't gonna have an effect on your microbiome and one is. So if you need a list of that, like you know, we're all gonna have those days where we need packaged foods and convenience foods. If you want a list of like the safe ones that I have found, I'm happy to share that with you. Just contact the person that invited you. Um, and then this was an interesting statistic for me. We really live in a generation where our children are more harmed by poor diet than exposures to drug, alcohol, and tobacco combined. And Dr. David Katz at Yale says this is the first generation of kids to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Again, this is why I'm a mom on a mission. I don't like that statistic, and I think we can change it. So the good news is that 75% of diseases are preventable through good nutrition. So I wanna talk a little bit more about that and again, making it simple. Um, so what really was amazing to me, again, learning this information is that um, phytonutrients are these amazing plant chemicals that um, are, it's, this, it's basically an apple has 10,000 ingredients. It would take 26 pages of this to list all of the phytonutrients in an apple. Um, and it's, it's all these cofactors, enzymes, vitamins, phytonutrients that work together in synergy that really help um, the body come into balance. So just as an example, so an apple has eight milligrams of vitamin C. It would actually take a 1500 milligram tablet. And just so you know, we've only discovered 13 vitamins. So we don't really know all the rest that are out there, right? Um, so we've figured out how to isolate those 13. So if you wanted um, that eight milligrams of vitamin C to get into your body, it would take a 1500 milligram tablet to get into the body versus an apple that has the eight milligrams, but all those cofactors enzymes. So it's completely bioavailable to our bodies and we can use it. And then we have all those other compounds that we haven't even discovered yet that are working and doing things that we don't even know what they do. So there's a huge difference between vitamins, even if they're the best whole food based vitamin versus whole foods themselves. Um, okay. The next thing I want to say again, we're all about good news here is that our microbiome changes fast. The, you know, so the, and again, I have people guess this, but the microbiome, the average back, the lifespan of the average bacteria in the body in the microbiome is 20 minutes. So you can really start having this whole new colony of, of bacteria, you know, in a day. So that's really, really exciting. Um, so a lot of people ask me too, you know, well, I have a, I have a, genetic predisposition to this. I have, um, you know, diabetes in my family, cancer in my family, I have histories of all these different things. Um, the best, the best news for this is that we have really mapped the whole micro, the, uh, epigenome. So we know all of the genes, we know what genes are responsible for what things. And they have found through epigenetics that you can turn off bad genes. You can literally through diet and lifestyle, you can turn off that cancer gene and you don't pass it on to your kids. So again, mom on a mission, we're gonna change the future by knowing this information. Um, okay, so that excites me. I know I'm a total nerd. <laughs> um, so the bacteria in which, let's see, the gut bacteria, um, sorry. You need to go out. I understand. I understand. You're going to have to go out. Can you go ask Daddy? Yeah, go ahead no, and go ask. Okay, go ask Dad. Go ahead. He's okay, napping. okay. Go ahead. Go wake him up, honey. He needs to help you. Okay, go wake him up, honey. He needs to help you. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so our gut bacteria, which are, this is really amazing and profound. There are 10 trillion gut bacteria, 10 times the cells in our back in our, our gut than we have human cells. So we actually start out born 100% human. We don't have those gut bacteria, right? And we die with um, only 10% human and 90% of our cells in our body are our gut bacteria. So that's incredibly profound. In fact, if you took all of that gut bacteria out, and remember, these are invisible things, we can't see them, it would weigh six pounds. And that, I mean, just like, again, I geek out. Okay, so I'm a little bit of a science nerd, you can sell. <laughs> But so one of the things to keep it simple is that we really, you know, I teach my kids, okay, are you feeding the good bacteria or the bad bacteria? Are you feeding the good guys or the bad guys based on food choices? So I'm going to get into that a little bit so you guys can understand that as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
So again, back to the 80-20 rule. So we want to have 80% good guys, 20% bad guys, because the 80% wins. Um, but here's the thing. There's a big difference between probiotics and a pill and what we, can, what we actually have available to us through nature. So we have discovered about 80, or I'm sorry, eight, I'm sorry, 100 different beneficial bacteria strains. And the highest amount of um, beneficial strains I've seen in a probiotic is about 35. So that's a big difference again. And then the other thing that happens when you take a probiotic pill is that the body will build up a, a mucus barrier to them over time. So you don't wanna take a large amount of probiotics for a long time because um, again, it will stop being as effective and you're basically just wasting money. So one of the things that I love is that sauerkraut, raw fermented sauerkraut, there's more probiotics in one teaspoon of the juice than an entire bottle of probiotics and it doesn't build up the mucus resistance to it. Um, so I will do things, I'm a sneaky mom, I will do things like put the sauerkraut juice in a smoothie. It's a great way to get that beneficial bacteria into the kids without the, the gag reflex. And I, like, I just want to talk about the gag reflex here for a second. Let's see if I can get to, oops, my funny picture there. A lot of kids with their picky palates, it's not about the fact that they don't want to eat certain things. Those certain things taste incredibly different to them than they do to us. And you, one of the ways you can kind of check this with your kiddos is to look at their tongue and if they have a white coating on their tongue that's typically bad yeasts and so when good things go on their tongue like with sauerkraut broccoli things like that it starts killing off that yeast and it really literally off gases onto the tongue and it tastes awful so you can really shape tastes again putting that sauerkraut juice in a smoothie so it's already you know killing them off but you're getting the pineapple or the whatever other things you're putting in the smoothie and tricking the body you know oh that tastes sweet um, so you're not having as much of that yuck factor. So I sneak things into my kids' smoothies, like the sauerkraut juice, the broccoli, things like that, that are gonna help you know, win the fight in the gut um, without having to have the battle so much. Um, okay, and what are the other things that we can do to help our microbiome? Well, spending time in nature. Dirt therapy <laughs> is great. Eat plenty of raw plants. A lot of probiotics come from raw plants. Um, and avoid antimicrobial drugs if possible and toxic body care products. They really do have a huge effect on our microbiome. Exercise and manage stress. Eat small amounts of fermented veggies. Eat fiber-rich plants. And that's actually fiber-rich plants, things like Jerusalem artichokes, um, chicory root, things like that, have prebiotics. So there's a great combination between eating probiotics and then eating prebiotics, which is these resistant starches that, are pro that are the, be the beneficial bacteria feed on. We don't even digest it, it's, it's for our beneficial bacteria. So again, if you're eating, if you're taking a probiotic capsule and not a prebiotic, then it's just, it's not getting the food that it needs. So a good balance between probiotics and prebiotics. And then don't eat late. Actually, our microbiome starts to shut down after six. And that's a hard one for me because I'm kind of a night owl. Um, so I try to, you know, again, make as, as early a dinner as possible, but we're, if we're doing sports and other things, we're not always gonna be perfect, but it's just good info to know. Okay, this is the only <laughs> picture on the internet I could find that said feed the microbiome. Of course, there's, that's my husband. I'm just kidding. Um, so what feeds the microbiome? So fruits and veggies are really gut food. I mean, that's, again, where we get a lot of those probiotics and then also um, a lot of those nutrients that keep our microbiome healthy. Um, and so I like to ask people, how many servings a day do you think you need to get? And a lot of people say five. You know, there was that five-a-day campaign for a long time. Um, and actually, in reality, it's anywhere between seven to nine to 13 servings a day. And if you work out an hour in any 24 hour period, it is actually 16 to 18 servings that your body needs. And that's just, I think, the minimum. If you eat that much and you're still struggling physically, your body needs more plants because that's where you get all the anti inflammatories, all the antioxidants that keep your body in, in balance. Um, so in my opinion, you just can't get enough. And so there's, you, there's ways to kind of sneak that in and I'll talk to you about that in a second. So again, probiotics, sauerkraut, other fermented veggies, tempeh, um, kombucha, and more. Um, and then the prebiotics are the Jerusalem artichoke, um, chicory root, um, FOS things, and I'll go into that in a second. Okay, and again, bad news, but our society does not eat enough fruits and vegetables. The average consumption is a cup of fruit and a one and a half cups of veggies daily. So that's a huge difference, and a, and a serving's about a cup. So that's a huge difference between what we are eating as a society and what we should be eating. Um, I like to keep it simple, and this is Dr. Sears. I'm a Dr. Sears certified health coach. Um, I love Dr. Sears. He's an amazing pediatrician. 
Um, but he's also written some amazing books for adults as well about primetime health. And his um, success diet is really awesome. So he says, focus on seafood, primarily um, wild-caught Alaskan salmon if possible for those omegas and healthy fats. Um, smoothies, things with multiple dark colors, um, things like flax seeds. Um, we have a, a complete powder that I'll talk to you about in a second. Um, salads, go green, try to mix it up. You know, things with it like arugula, kale, spinach, things like that. And then spices, turmeric, black pepper, garlic. Actually, I make a turmeric paste that you put coconut oil, turmeric, black pepper, and it makes it 6,000 times more bioavailable in terms of those anti-inflammatories that turmeric has. Um, if you want that recipe, let me know. We have an amazing health community where we just really share ideas. So if um, you're not part of our One Simple Change Wellness Inspired Nutrition page on Facebook, let the person that invited you know that you'd like to be added to that because there's amazing recipes there and we, we share a lot of great health tips. Um, and then smart snacking. So just learn to graze. Um, eat the rule of twos. So eat half as much twice as often. Things like chopsticks help your kids slow down and it's kind of fun. Um, so you can just keep it simple. Then supplements. I love that Dr. Sears, the only supplement he takes and recommends is Juice Plus. And so I'll get into that in a little bit. It's just a really great way to get some great nutrition in. Um, I want to share my story really quick. So, you know, again, my son was having a lot of issues. Well, he got that from mom. Um, you know, I was really, I was 10, well, actually now 12 years ago, I was really sick. I was um, overweight. I had cystic acne. I was on two medications for migraines and crazy food cravings. And I was, you know, kind of mildly depressed because I just wasn't in charge of my own health. I got sick often. And um, this doctor, I actually flew my son to a specialist when we had the autism scare. And this doctor shared Juice Plus with me. She said, you know, this is an incredible product. It's a great way to get 30 different fruits, veggies, and berries in your diet every single day. And I just don't know anyone that does that. And I've seen amazing results in my patients. She had her, her MD, her biochemistry degree, and her naturopathic doctorate. So with three doctorates, she really had her bases covered. Um, and it was kind of profound once we added it. So we opened the little capsules into his baby food. And within a few months, he started making more eye contact. He started reaching for fruits and vegetables. He, he ate a tomato. He would never have touched that before. The texture would have weirded him out. And for me, I started taking alongside him, wanting, you know, not wanting my baby to take something I wasn't taking too. And actually, I got to get off those prescription meds for my migraines. I didn't have a migraine. after The day I took Juice Plus was my last migraine. My day I started Juice Plus was my last migraine. And then the weight started falling off. With my other two pregnancies, I didn't gain the weight. You can see I was so puffy with my first pregnancy and miserable. I had preeclampsia. I had all kinds of issues. My next two pregnancies were amazing. and I didn't gain that excess weight. Um, and I just, you know, I crave salads now. Like salads are my junk food, whereas fries used to be my junk food. So again, a lot of help that you can give yourself. Um, and like I said, it is a generational thing. So it actually started with my mom. Back in the 50s, it wasn't fashionable to nurse. And my my um, grandmother got discouraged away from nursing, so my mom was bottle fed. And one of the things they're finding out now is that breast milk is full of oligosaccharides. And that is the prebi that's the prebiotic, fructoagulosaccharides or oligosaccharides are what the beneficial bacteria feed on in our gut. So if you're nursed, you have a better chance of having a, a healthier microbiome. Again, I'm not about, like if you can't nurse, it's not, a, it's not the end of the world. We just need to do some you know, gut help. Um, if there is an imbalance, um, if you were bottle fed or things like that. So my mom was bottle fed. She had a gut imbalance. She had allergies. And then I inherited her microbiome. Um, I was nursed, but I inherited her microbiome. And so instead of allergies to seasonal allergies, I got food allergies and I had a lot of gut issues. And then my son, same thing, but the next level, and it started affecting his brain. So it, they typically see that. They see it from seasonal allergies to food allergies to gut imbalance to brain to brain imbalance. So my son now um, is actually his sensory processing. So it is on the autism spectrum, but he's so high functioning and he's so brilliant and bright. I kind of like, I hate having him have that stigma of that, that diagnosis, but, and I, but I can't help kind of wonder what it would have been if we hadn't found out this information. Um, so I really get passionate about sharing juice plus with people because it really is a simple solution with the capsules. We have, um, the nutrition from 30 different fruits, veggies, and berries. And then there's an amazing chewable gummy. 
and then we have a complete shake and I'll, I'll get into the combo of these two things in a second. If you're a purist and you want to grow all of your own food and juice it and, you know, just get fruits and vegetables out of a trough, we have an incredible solution, especially living here in Vegas. Um, but I have these in Washington state too, because we have slugs and in ground gardens just get decimated by critters. We have this aeroponic growing system that is incredible. Um, and you can grow all of your own fruits and vegetables this way. Um, it has been an amazing, I homeschool my son and it's been a fun homeschooling project. It's him photobombing his purple cauliflower. These are my gardens here in Vegas. Um, and we can you know, just go outside and pick fresh kale to put straight in the Vitamix in the morning with our smoothie. And one of the things I love too is knowing that they're getting that nutrition. Um, a green, just as a weird statistic in my head, but a green bean loses all of its vitamin C within 24 hours of picking. And when you think about things that have been picked, first of all, a lot of things are picked before they're ripe so they can survive transport. So they're picked before they're ripe, they get transported, they get stored on the shelves. By the time we get them, you know, it's maybe a week at best, two weeks more likely, even three, four weeks. So we're losing a lot of that nutrition through how it's grown, how it's picked and how it's transported and stored. Um, so I love that we're getting this you know, tr nutrition right you know, the second we pick it. Um, I love that it's 30 it grows 30% faster and, um, I'm sorry, three times faster and, and grows 30% more yield because it's getting perfect nutrients and perfect water. There's water in this base with ionic earth minerals that feed the plants and it shoots up through this little pump and then it rains down on the roots every 15 minutes. No dirt, digging or weeding, 90% less water used and 90% less space, so that's awesome. Um, you can grow indoors. This is our garden in our living room. This is my mom's in her, in her laundry room. Um, and then if that's not your thing, if you don't wanna be an urban farmer like me, um, we have this simple solution with just the Juice Plus products. So the capsules, I'm so passionate about the capsules because they have probiotics in them. There's, it's just raw fruits and vegetables. They are picked, vine ripened, so, you know, in those great later stages of, of ripening, so they have all those a lot of the nutrients actually come in those later stages. So they have all of those nutrients trapped in time. They juice it the same day, freeze it same day. And then it goes to the encapsulation facility and it's dried from those frozen powder, their frozen juice to powders within seconds. And it never reaches over 98 degrees. So it's still raw. Um, the sugar and salt is filtered out. So you're getting all of that power pack nutrition without the sugar load of juicing. So it's really an awesome solution for people with that are like diabetic or let's say they have a yeast overload and they and the yeast yeast will feed on sugar from from fruits as well. So it's a great solution if you um, need to kind of starve out excess yeast in your body. And then the complete is actually um, loaded again with 15 more plants. So with the total the the fruits and I'm sorry the capsules and the complete shake you're getting 45 plants in your diet every single day. And the complete has fructoagulosaccharides in it. It's got chicory root and some other prebiotics that, so the combo is this incredible gut therapy. And if you really feel like you need a gut reset, we have an incredible 10 day program called the Shred 10. And whoever invited you can invite you to that. It's a quick, um, about 15 minutes to learn about the Shred 10. And it's an amazing intensive gut reset. Um, okay, and again, the reason I'm really passionate about, about Juice Plus, not only because of my story, but as a science nerd, I really started di gig digging in, because I was like, wow, to make that such a profound difference, you know, just adding these capsules and, and drinking some shakes to have such a profound difference, I was like, what, what's up with this? <laughs> so Juice Plus really is just food. Like I said, it has a food label. It doesn't have a supplement label. It's not going to list all those tens of thousands of phytonutrients that are in it. You couldn't put, fit it on there. Um, so it really is just whole food, like, like again, like picking up a bag of spinach, it has all those tens of thousands of phytonutrients. It's non-GMO, dairy-free, and gluten-free. Um, it's NSF certified. This is a big deal, you guys. It's third-party tested to be pure. Um, there's popular brands out there that say raw, organic, and, you know, all this great labeling, but they're not NSF tested, and they've been pulled off the shelves, like toxic levels of lead, salmonella, things like that. And so you really need that NSF third-party testing, to be sh if you are doing a shake or a supplement, to be sure you're not getting very dangerous um, um, things. And then, so they test it for, you know, things like pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, molds, bacteria, the list goes on. Um, clinic, the clinical research is also really amazing. They, this is the most researched nutritional product in the world, bar none. And these are double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, peer-reviewed, and published studies. So this is the gold standard. You could not get any more um, amazing research than this. And they've seen things like, 
again, 36 studies, then several of these areas that they've looked at have multiple studies. So multiple studies have shown that it, it improves cardiovascular wellness, not only um, combats high fat meals, but helps with circulation. And I mean, the list goes on, it supports the immune system, improves gum tissue and, and dental health. My mom, I have actually two dentists on my team because my mom had periodontal issues. Um, and then after adding juice plus really, they were like, what are you doing? You don't have periodontal issues anymore. And, and she was like, my daughter has me on this juice plus stuff. And they have this, this amazing dental health study that they were this dentist that I went in and talked with. She was like, I'm blown away. I need to offer this to my patients. Um, also reduces oxidative stress, reduces inflammation systemically. This is huge. This is the underlying root cause of so many diseases, whether it's cancer to Alzheimer's um, to MS, all of those different things start with inflammation in the body, protects DNA, um, healthier skin and, and um, microderm circulation, all of those things. And I, I get, <laughs> I laugh. It actually has been shown to reduce DNA damage by 66%. And I have been taking this now for 12 years and I feel better at 40 than I did in my 20s. So really exciting um, protection in terms of aging and disease. Um, childhood obesity, they looked at it in childhood obesity and um, insulin resistance and utilization, quality of life and cancer survivors. And they've even studied it, one study on smokers where they saw that it actually reduced and almost eliminated the detrimental effects to smoking. I don't like to share that a lot because I want people to quit smoking, but if they are going to not, then they, they definitely need this protection. Okay. I love that my daughter goes out the door with shakes every morning. Um, when she was um, going to regular school, she's homeschooling right at this moment as well. But she'd go pick kale from the tower garden. She'd put a bunch of frozen berries and she'd put complete. And I saw a huge difference in her ability to focus well into lunch and she wasn't starving like the kids if I volunteered in her class these kids would be starving you'd be losing them by 11 o'clock you know and she was just on task like because she got proper nutrition for breakfast as opposed to empty cereals or things like that um, this is just a little tidbit on what you'll learn about the shred tenant that does make sense one of the things that I saw in myself was I had this yo-yo diet problem I could not lose that excess weight like I talked about um, and you saw those pictures before, it was just super puffy. Um, so I would crash diet, I would lose some weight, and then they would all come back. Well, our body's job um, to protect our body from toxins, we, our job is to hold on to excess fat. It protects our vital organs from that excess, those excess toxins. So if we don't get the toxins out, as soon as we stop starving ourselves and over-exercising, it comes back with a vengeance, right? Because our body's like, oh, that was close. That was like probably almost cancer. Let's you know, add some protection here. Um, if we instead detox and get those toxins out, oops, I'm missing a thing. Uh, our body doesn't have to hold on to the excess fat and it can naturally shed that fat and those toxins at the same time without having to starve ourselves and over-exercise just through good plant nutrition. And this is my friend, Joel. He actually um, gained almost a hundred pounds when he was going to his, through his doctorate for, um, for, he's a school principal, but he got his doctorate in education and gained almost 100 pounds in that grad school. And this is him at 33 and over, you know, several shred tens and just keeping up. He, do, he does the maintenance of shred tens a few times a year. Now at 45, you know, again, just look at the difference there. And then this is my friend Erica. Um, again, several shreds. She did um, the shred 10 for 30 days and um, continues to do that, you know, through here and there, like I think she does it quarterly and she was able to reduce from 55 pounds down from a size 14 to a size two and just keeps it off and feels so much more vibrant. Um, okay. And then, you know, how much does it cost? A lot of people ask juice plus is super affordable. It's $2 and 38 cents a day or $2 a, sh a, a shake. So I bought an organic peach in season. I wanted to see how much it would cost. It was $2 and 50 cents for that one peach in season where it was grown. So it's a huge affordable, um, just insurance policy this to bridge the gap nutritionally. You're getting those 30 different fruits, veggies, and berries every single day. Um, okay, and I love the fact that this company has a huge heart for kids. So if you order the capsules, you can sponsor a child to get capsules or gummies, their choice for free through the Children's Health Study. And this is the largest longitudinal study of its kind. There's about a million participants at this point, and they've seen things like kids are, saying no to fast food, they're eating more fruits and vegetables, they're taking less over-the-counter prescription drugs, um, getting sick less, I mean, the list goes on. It's a really, really exciting study. 
Um, and we, I just, as a community, we just really love to invite people to be part of our community. If juice mugs makes sense to you, great. Contact the person that invited you. If you just want to start with one simple change at a time, join our Facebook group. There's an amazing, um, ebook that you can download. There's a healthy living amb ambassadors guide for kids with a lot of activities and great ideas in there. We're really just sharing about sharing education. If you go and you just make one simple change at a time, we're so excited to have you as part of our, as a part of our community. Um, and, you know, again, we focus on kind of the, the things that we can change, the core four, eating more whole foods, drinking more water, getting more sleep, moving, getting your body going. Um, and I, we just, again, want to invite you to be part of our community in any way that makes sense to you. A lot of people will do like salad in a jar parties. We do kind of community events together where we prep food together to just make it easier to get that whole food nutrition in um, because it can be overwhelming. It can, it can feel like you're kind of jumping off the deep end. And if you don't have that support, it's hard to make those changes. And I just really want to thank you for your time and your patience with the interruption with my little one. Um, and I'm going to stop my share and I am going to stop the recording and see if you guys have any questions.